Again, we are humbled and so thankful that you've tuned in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. This week, uh, our attention will be dialed into Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2, but we'll read uh, the uh, first verse also uh, just to kind of tie things in. So we'll read from uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. It reads, In the year that King Uzziah died, uh, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Verse 2 says, Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two wings he covered his face, and with two wings he covered his feet, and with two wings he flew. Let us uh, pray, our Heavenly Father, give us clarity on what you are saying to us in verse 2 as we are focusing on it today. Help us to add this verse to other useful ideas uh, that you've given us to live by. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In chapter 6, uh, verse 1, we looked at uh, two weeks ago uh, before Father's Day, uh, Isaiah was changing his focus from King Uzziah, uh, Israel's former king uh, that had died. Uh, he was refocusing on the Lord, who was still on his throne. Often we find ourselves in situations that someone close to us has to be removed before we can notice the Lord or recognize our need for the Lord. And that uh, is uh, closer than close to us. The Lord, is, as Reverend Leach used to say, our, form, our late pastor, he used to say, the Lord is closer than close. Uh, but yet, uh, sometimes we allow others to restrict our view of him. While Isaiah was looking at Uzziah's empty throne, he was also able to see the Lord high and lifted up on his throne. And this week we move from saints to scene two to reveal the seraphims that has six wings, but only using two in a normal way. Two wings to cover their face, two wings to cover their feet, and the remaining two wings they used to fly. This is the only place in the Bible that we find uh, seraphims mentioned. The Hebrew word for seraphim means to burn and relates to these creatures to the holy God. This is why they repeat holy, holy, holy before the Lord's throne. A lack of timing uh, leads me to not try to debate the nature of these seraphims or, you know, what they are, where they're from, where they usually show up and all of that. Uh, I, I want to just focus on the seraphims and their actions in this vision of Isaiah. Now, usually within a temple, especially in a place like Solomon's temple, uh, there would have been drapes or curtains that normally restricted the view either in or out. But the text doesn't mention drapes at all, but it does mention seraphims, which beg me to give attention to their purpose. Isaiah is described as having unclean lips, and he's associated with people with unclean lips. This would indicate that they may speak things that would hinder their relationship with the Lord. The seraphims are our main concern for now, and the first question is, who or what were the seraphims? They belong to this vision only and must stand in a vital relationship to the condition and circumstances of Isaiah's time, but can be useful to our day and time. It should be noted also that 
the time was that of the great crisis in the life of the great prophet of that time period. There are some people, preachers and whatnot, that are considered great preachers, uh, but there's a great crisis that we're living in. And, and I'd like to surmise that most of the time, somewhere, someplace, either we're coming out of a great crisis we're, or we're headed into a great crisis. If ever a picture had a meaning that is worth knowing, it's surely Isaiah's picture of the seraphims. Now, Isaiah's faith must either die at this point or be reborn with a new and more glorious rebirth. Now, it would seem that whether everything fails for him with the fall of King Uzziah or he would start anew. King Uzziah is dead. Many people cease to really live when somebody close to them or that it have been instrumental in their lives cease to live. So Isaiah must make a decision now whether he would move on or he would stay there and become stationary, going nowhere. Now, the vision uh, is the answer to Isaiah's dilemma. The part that the seraphims play in Isaiah's new consciousness is not difficult for us to see. They present the attitude that Israel ought to learn in contradiction to the attitude that they had under King Uzziah. It's much like the Beatitudes that Jesus taught. They must now, along with Isaiah, their prophet, the one that stood between them and God, he spoke to God on their behalf, and he spoke to them for God. They must adapt a new way of thinking or a new mindset. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So there is a call for a new mindset. Even in this day and age, then and now, God's people are standing on the edge of a time when, on a daily basis, we must adjust to a new way of thinking. As we are facing the, are dealing with and learning to deal with the COVID-19 virus, when it's over and done, we will have had to learn a new way of thinking, living by new norms. The seraphim represents the prophet's own new ideas. Therefore, he will strive to make the attitude or the new mindset and the message of the seraphim his own. And we must learn to work at making the ideas of the Lord, the mindset of the Lord, our own. The same mind that Jesus had, we must strive to make it our own. Because right now, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are past finding out. But he constantly seeks to reveal himself and all his character and attributes to us so that we can learn to think more along the same lines that he thinks. From the moment that his lips are touched with the glowing stones from the altar, Isaiah also becomes like a seraphim. So the picture of the seraphim still remains as an idea. So don't focus on that these are angels or anything. Focus on the idea. Not only for 
the ministers of the word of God, but also for the whole church of Jesus Christ, we must adapt this mindset. Let's uh, now consider their attitudes and, their, and, and the message of these uh, seraphims. The significance of the seraphims, it seems to me that the name by which the prophet designates them is very important. These seraphims are simply the burning ones. They stand around the throne and partakes of the burning glory of God. And all believers must rec recognize the importance of our closeness to the throne of God. Not only in praying, but in living. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 8 uh, says, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Isaiah developed, uh, Jeremiah rather, developed this attitude because he got tired of, of saying what the Lord was telling him to say death and destruction. In other words, he was warning Israel where they was headed. And, 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 and everywhere he go, people would start saying about him and whispering and, and he even got so that they would say it in his face. Here comes that old uh, uh, fire and brimstone prophet. So Isaiah, uh, uh, rather, Jeremiah got tired of that. And he says, I'm not gonna make mention of him nor uh, will I speak any more in his name. But things didn't work out the way Jeremiah intended. He continues that verse by saying, but his word, the Lord's word, was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. You ever had something that you, you were trying to keep from saying, but it was just burning want to come out? Jeremiah says, his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing. I, I, I just couldn't handle it. I couldn't stay at home. I had to go and tell them, and we ought to have that kind of burning. That we got something to tell a dying world, and we ought to be burning to tell them. Isaiah is learning to stand in the presence of the glory of God so much so that every fiber of his life is aflame with that same glory. The Shekinah glory is uh, the English translation of the Hebrew word that means dwelling or settling and denotes the dwelling or settling uh, of the divine presence of God. God's divine presence, we ought to live so that God's divine presence will settle upon us. And, 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 and wherever we go, whoever we are around, especially whoever we're around, because we have a habit of changing uh, uh, our who, who we are by who we're around. Too much of uh, do as the Roman, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, I guess. But on Sunday, we're real churchy. But on Monday, we're hell raisers on the job or something. But we should learn to or be striving towards allowing the presence of the Lord to show in us and through us wherever we go at all times. Isaiah will learn to be as a seraphim, one of God's fiery witnesses, serving. In chapter 20, we see Isaiah showing that he is a bright and shining light for the Lord, trying to prepare sinners in Israel for the Lord's presence. And what Isaiah did in chapter 20, I pray the Lord never requires it of me. Uh, 
Isaiah was instructed of the Lord to walk down the middle of Main Street in this particular city, buck naked, to give Israel a symbol of how they looked in trying to put their trust in other nations instead of trusting in the Lord. That's another sermon at another time. Note, in the next place, the perfect reverence is here pictured. Each had six wings, and with two wings, they covered their face in reverence to God. That there is a burning that 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 they covered their face to protect them from them, their, their face from because it was such a, a burning glow. And that's why uh, in the Old Testament, for a long time, it was forbidden to, for anybody to look upon God lest they die. And then with two wings, they covered their feet. And of the six wings, four are used for the purpose of doing reverence. We ought to be careful where we walk. But then the last set of wings, with two wings, they flew. And look at what, where they're going. One went to the altar and got a burning coal and brought it back and touched Isaiah's lips to prepare him for the presence of the Lord. And, and, and our lives should be filled with that type of, with more reverence and then service. And then a lot of the other stuff that we're doing, we wouldn't have time for. The seraphims, if nothing else, helped Isaiah and, it, and, and us to refocus our attention on the Lord. Their purpose was to prepare Isaiah for a closer relationship with the Lord. Our purpose should be to help non-believers to prepare for a closer relationship with the Lord. These seraphims did what was needed to change Isaiah's sinful condition that prepared him for God's presence. And it is just as easy, it is easier for us. All we got to do is tell people the good news that Jesus died for our sins. They buried him and he rose. Prepare them. Give them the good news to help prepare them for the presence of the Lord. We need to humble ourselves in the Lord's presence and, and everywhere we go should be considered holy ground. Our self-grandizing must never serve for the purpose of outshining God's glory. The seraphims used four wings to reverence and two to serve. Now, if you don't get anything else today, I pray that you'll get this. Four things go together in the life of the seraphims, and they must be found in every good and strong Christian's life. The first one is they participated in God's burning. In the burning of God's glory, they participated. Every Christian must participate in God's burning. In other words, you, you, you must, uh, 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 I think it's 1 Peter 2 and 3 or something like that says, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. We must have a burning for God, a strong burning desire for God's word. So participation in God's burning glory and then a profound reverence for God. We must have humility and a readiness to serve. To divide these four things is disastrous. Now, here's my closing thought, and then I'm out of here. Luke chapter 24, verse 32 
and verse 33 of the English Standard Version reads, they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scripture? These are guys that uh, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, they were returning to their normal life and Jesus joined them on the Emmaus Road. And he started discussing with them and helping them to understand that Christ, that Jesus must die and in three days rise again. And, and, and it doesn't matter, a preacher or a teacher can preach and teach till they're blue in the face if Jesus don't show up and give the increase Nobody will get it. It has to be given. And you have to want it bad enough. If you get it. And then verse 33 says, And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together. In other words, that, that burning desire that the Lord gives us through his word as, as he gives the increase must cause us to desire fellowship with other believers and to serve by seeking those that are lost. The burning brings a desire to fellowship with others in sharing God's word. God's presence should move us to serve others, to be ready in season and out of season to share the gospel with those that are lost. It should move us to tell a dying world that Jesus Christ died as an atonement for our sins. He paid the price that we never could pay. He was, he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day morning, he rose with all power in his hand, power to save to the utmost, power to save the worst of society. Now, isn't that good news? Well, let's pray and, and I'll see you next week if the Lord's will. Our Heavenly Father, we pray now that uh, you would help us to value the burning need that we should have in your, for your presence and help us to help others to want to have a closer walk with you and help us to, to never overlook the fact that the way we live can help others so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that's it for this week, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, uh, don't forget to love somebody the way the Lord loves you, to forgive somebody like he forgives us, and to be merciful, for his mercy endures forever. Each day, we wake up with brand new mercy. Take care. <laughs>